Hi everyone, my name is King Ivy, and this is an introductory to our lesson. And in today's lesson, we'll be covering Q plots. And Q plot is basically a function within this package called ggplot2. And yes, you're probably wondering, are we going to cover ggplots? Yes, we will. Uh, maybe, probably not in this lesson, but maybe in the the next lesson, if there's enough uh, demand and questions uh, covering uh, ggplots, because they are a little bit more complex and it'll be a little bit longer video. Uh, versus Q plots, I think will meet the needs of a lot of the users, especially if you're not. Uh, it'll meet the lead, leads, uh, unless you unless you want to make a lot of customizations. But before we get started, let's just install ggplot2. So you'll see I've already installed it uh, previously, and then as well, we're gonna attach this data called banking dot marketing, uh, and essentially what this is is this is this uh, Portuguese banking institution provide this data to this website and and I'll include a link to the data and this as well and basically they wanted to know was were clients subscribing to the bank term deposits and you'll see that they have a number of different variables age job marital status uh, whether or not they have a housing loan their education etc cetera, etc cetera, whether or not they're the number of employees, quarterly indicators, and then here's the ultimate output variable. So this is a classification problem under uh, supervised learning, supervised statistics. So let's just, it, uh, before we get started, let's just go question mark Q ply, and you'll see a whole bunch of different options and it looks very similar to the plot function. And they even mentioned that here. It's just really a quick way to plot things. So for example, here, you can plot job. You can do qplot jobs, and you'll see if we were to compare it to job, you'll see how the difference between the two. Qplots do a really nice job at making sure that things are nicely formatted, that you can see all the various data here and these different components. So, uh, pretty pretty simple, pretty easy. Okay, so let's let's try to do something a little bit more complex. Let's do say job, uh, age and job. Actually, let's flip that around. So you'll see here. Here's one way of looking at it. But what I actually prefer, uh, instead of this format, this is kind of like a pseudo scatter plot, if you can call it that. What I actually like to use is geom dot box plot or dot box plot quotation box plot, and you'll see here provide presents this really nice graph here, showing you basically the the box plot, and I'm sure you guys are, are familiar. the The lines are the medians. The box, the end of the boxes are, I believe, um, one standard deviation. Someone can correct me, or not one standard deviation. The the 25th and 75th quartiles. So you'll see this will cover 50% of the data and all these various points here. So you can see students are tend to be much younger than retirees, but not inclusively. So you'll see there's some older students and then as well some younger retirees. So just an interesting way of seeing the age distribution uh, for these different uh, professions. Okay. Uh, that's nice. So let's let's try to get into some some scatter plots. So for example, uh, what we can do is go uh, age balance. So you can see here the relationship between age and balance, which is nice, and this is helpful. But I can't tell whether or not balance increases with age. I kind of get a gauge of it. Uh, one way of doing that would be to use this. And again, geom function is super useful. We're going to use this. We're going to basically create a smoother and we're going to list out. We want to see points and I want to see out the, the smooth or a little less as it said. Oh, okay. Maybe not points. Maybe it's point. This takes a little while. It's a little bit of a larger graph. You can see here. Here's like kind of the average. It's even a little bit hard to see here, but generally it looks like it's increasing with age and it kind of drops off, I guess, reasonably after uh, 
after a certain age, but you can kind of see it. Um, I'll, pro I'll see if I can throw up a better example using a different um, diagram. Actually, yeah, uh, yeah. Let's try. Um, let's try coloring it. Maybe that'll help. So now I want to understand whether or not, similar to a plot, you can assign a color instead of C O L. Basically, spells it like the the British or the Canadian way of spelling color. Here, you can list it the color, list Y, and then it produces this really nice graph here that shows you uh, whether or not someone subscribed to the term plot. So you can see here, there's kind of a increase in balances for those who did sign up term plots when they get older, uh, and that's just one way of approaching it. Obviously, you can change the size of the of the points. So let's play around with it. Let's see what the right format is. So here, I just basically doubled the size of the the points. It makes it look a little bit nicer. You can see the points along the graph as well. Uh, pretty nice. Uh, you can always well make size, for example, equal a certain value. So for example, let's take a look. Let's see what are the integer values we have here. Uh, let's say the duration. So you can see here all these different points, all these different options are available to you. And as well, you can throw on a title. So here we can call it main is equal to, and this is the main title. We can call this balance versus age, or I should really say age versus balance, but that's fine. So you can see up there. And then as well, you can check, change the X label, Y label, all these uh, different options. I'm going to show you a couple different ones. First, I want to get rid of this size duration and I'm going to use this function called facets and facets are basically ways that you can create separate things by uh, columns or rows so there's always going to be two sides of this so for example we can see how does default uh, play into this so let's go default uh, tilde and we're going to dot just because we don't want anything in the particular uh, columns so you'll see the first one uh, differentiates the various rows so if we open up here you'll see here uh, yes or no and then you can see the comparison of uh, how they performed you can also make it uh, let's see what the best way of doing this let's say whether or not there's a housing loan so you'll see here it's created this two by two matrix with the various smoothers and you can see th this box would represent no housing loan, right? And then no default. And you'll see that these different options uh, are available. So you can see how facets uh, can be really useful for your, um, your creating graphs. And obviously there's a few other functions, uh, but basically I showed you what I typically use when I use Qplots. If there's enough demand, I'll show you ggplots. It's going to be a little bit longer video, a little bit more complex, but I think ggplots are also super useful and um, really important. So I look forward to speaking to you next time. If you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. And thank you for watching.